Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. Brave Alistair is here. Now in today's session we're going to be looking at the female pelvis. Now the female pelvis plays a key role in facilitating some form of movement as it is a point of articulation for the lower limbs and as well as the upper part of the body. So on the lower aspect you find that the femur or the bones of the legs will then come and attach to the pelvis so that it can then allow some form of movement. Now on the upper part of the pelvis you find that it will then act as a structure that will suspend the weight of the structures that are on the upper part of the body. Not only does the female pelvis play those two key roles but also plays a key role when it comes to the process of childbirth. Now let's dive into and see what are some of those parts that make up the female pelvis. So with me here I have a structure that I have drawn here that that is going to help us understand the female pelvis. Now let's try and label the female pelvis so that when we look at it and its functionality in terms of childbirth then we will understand the exact structures that we will be referring to. So the female pelvis is formed of four main bones that are fused together. So we have number one we have two innominate bones and then we have number two we have a sacrum and then the third one is the coccyx or coccyx whichever way you would want to uh, make a pronunciation of that t a terminology so those are the four main bones that are comprised in a uh, pelvis now these only form a part of the uh they form that is the pelvis but then there are other parts that are then later attached to the pelvis to form the complete process during the process of a childbirth but in relation to the female pelvis we're going to look at what the female uh, uh, two innominate bones are comprised of and what roles they do play. So when we look at this part you're going to notice that you have this broader region. The broader region here is what you're going to refer to as the ilium. Then from the ilium you have another aspect down here that we call the ischiotuberosity. From the ischiotuberosity in attachment to the other innominate bone, you have what we are going to refer to as the pubic bone. Okay, so that's the pubic bone. Now, in between uh, the pubic bone, you have an opening there, which is more or less like a hole that is around that bone, and that is referred to as an obturator foramen. Okay, that is an obturator foramen and then you have this particular portion here which is a point of articulation of the femur. So you'll find that there is a femur on the other end here. Okay, so this creates a socket for the femur to come and articulate in so that now there is connection of the pelvis to the lower limbs and this portion is what we refer to as an acetabulum. That is an acetabulum. Okay, now that we have labeled part of that innominate bone, the same structures will be the same labels that we have also on the other end. Importantly also, in the inner part here, you're going to find a protrusion here, and that protrusion is what we're going to call the ischiospines. So we will have the ischiospines here. So the ischiospines are very important, especially in the process of childbirth, because they act as a landmark for us to be able to ascertain how low or how high the presenting part is from the pelvic outlet. That is when you perform a vaginal examination or assessment, you'll be able to detail in um, 
this the position of the presenting part and that is uh, um, a, a process that we call ascertaining the station of the presenting part now do check out for a video where i look at the station in far much detail and how you can ascertain the station once you do an internal vaginal examination and you can find that obviously on my uh, youtube channel which is the brain checkers academy now when you look at this particular diagram here you will find that there is this bottom end here now this bottom end here is what we refer to as the coccyx okay that is the coccyx so you have fused bones around there that will represent the coccyx and then you have this other region on the upper part which is going to be the sacrum then where the sacrum and the coccyx now come together or where they fuse you're going to call that as a sacrococcygeal joint so that will now be referred to as a sacrococcygeal joint okay so where they come into contact that will be referred to as a sacrococcygeal joint now just above the sacrum or on the border of the sacrum you have some form of protrusion that uh, is going to be noticed and we call that this a uh, sacro promontory so you will notice that there is going to be more or less like a forward deviation of the sacrum so this forms the border of the sacrum and this protrusion here which is this part is what we refer to as the sacro promontory so this also is then an important landmark when we are making a pelvic adequacy assessment because it should not be prominent because when it is prominent it means that it is going to affect the pelvic diameters and thereby affecting also the process of a child birth as well now these are some of the areas that we can label on that female pelvis now if you look at the uh, pelvis itself you also come to understand that these two innominate uh, structures or innominate bones they have an iliac crest now the iliac crest is divided into four parts you have the posterior aspect and the anterior aspect the posterior aspect is divided into what we call the superior posterior iliac crest so you will have First and foremost, you have the posterior aspect, and then you are going to have also the anterior aspect. Now, in the posterior aspect, you will first and foremost have what is a superior, and then you will have an inferior. The same as well, anteriorly, you are going to have a superior and also an inferior aspect okay so with the iliac crest then you find that this particular part you're looking at it from this end so it becomes the anterior aspect this is going to be the anterior superior iliac crest then just above the border of the iliac crest and the acetabulum you will find you have the anterior inferior iliac crest then posteriorly then you will have the superior the superior posterior iliac crest and the inferior posterior iliac crest so those are form now the hip bones on the uh, wider side of the female pelvis so this portion now that then joins those to innominate bones anteriorly is going to be referred to as the symphysis pubis so this is the symphysis pubis it is more or less a cartilaginous area that also allows some form of movement during the process of childbirth so the two innominate bones are going to be brought in together anteriorly by the symphysis pubis and then posteriorly they will be attached through the sacrum by the sacro um, iliac joint so this region here which attaches the the innominate bone and the sacrum is what we call the sacro iliac 
sacroiliac because this is the sacrum and this is the ilium so sacroiliac joint so that is posteriorly they are attached to the sacroiliac joint and then anteriorly they are attached together by the symphysis pubis and then you have an area here in between the sacrum and the ilium this area is what we refer to as the greater sciatic notch Okay, that is what we refer to as the greater sciatic notch. Greater sciatic notch. And then on the bottom part, just below the ischiospines, you have the lesser sciatic notch. So basically, those are some of the structures that form the female pelvis. And that is in a brief what you would find when you look at a female pelvis. Now, there are quite a number of types of female pelvis and we'll look at those in a separate video. So do make sure you check out for that video as well. So you can also learn what are the differences in their pelvic brim, their inlet and their cavities as well. Now, if you found this particular video interesting and helpful in understanding in brief what the female pelvis is all about, please do drop me comments in the comments section. Don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up, share this video as much as possible, and also subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is the Brain Shakers Academy. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.